Welcome to the Crossdressing Lifestyle Channel. My name is Sophie Summers and this is Sophie's Brew. Well, technically this is my brew because this is my nice cup of tea. And I do like to sit down from time to time with a nice cup of and reflect on things. And I thought I would take this opportunity here to reflect on the whole aspect of cross-dressing. Now, from time to time, I do do various videos on the subject matter because I suppose I'm very, very passionate about it. It affords me the opportunity to live the life that I like to live in a way that makes me feel comfortable. I'm 85, 95% of the time in a guy mode and the other, whatever that remainder is, mathematically, I spend as Sophie. Um, and I'm very, very comfortable with where I sit on the spectrum. Now, the reason for doing this a time to be sort of counted a video is I think it's very difficult to make progress of any significant um, amount without a sort of unified force going forward. When I was a child, um, being a gay was an extremely uh, taboo, fraught with legal implications. Um, and there were lots of people, lots of events that changed the understanding perception of the whole idea of being a gay. Um, what we don't have in our perceived community is a lot of driving force. We have a tendency, I think, to stick our end on the back of the L, G, B, G, T, A, F, B, C, E, G, K, whatever the damn expression is these days, community. We don't seem to be have a forthright and how would I say vociferous voice out there. Sure, you can say that people like Eddie Izzard is quite often in the press presenting his true persona, um, as he puts it, and also people like Grayson Perry. And I take my hat and I tilt my wig to them. They are very educated, well-meaning, um, and very articulate people who I think do normalise and put a very good perspective on it. But I still think that the mainstream media drive the average person's view of cross-dressers. I still think that cross-dressing, if, you, if your husband or your boyfriend or your partner cross-dresses, it's still very much a, whoosh, we shouldn't tell anybody and um, keep it quiet. It's okay if it's at home, but please, please don't go standing out in the public and, and embarrassing yourself and embarrassing me and nobody understands and, oh dear, I bet you look awful in a dress. And all of these perceptions that need and stereotypes, as far as I'm concerned, need to be knocked back, even if it's just one at a time, to make any sort of progress. I think we do need in a, in some way, and I'm never too sure about how it can be done. Maybe some of you have suggestions and I hope that people are watching this video have very positive um, experiences and information to share. And if you do, please pop it down below because it's important that we share information with each other. One of the things that we wanted to do on this channel was to try and coordinate things, not just here in Brighton, because you know I'm quite sort of comfortable here in Brighton. I know exactly where to go, who the people to talk to, which shops are very, very welcoming, which restaurants are very, very welcoming. And I built that knowledge up in all the years that I've been here. I still believe that Brighton is a very great place to be, but it's still a cocoon. It's not the same, and it probably is not the same as where you live. I mean, I know in certain parts of the States, it's really, really tough being transgendered, yet alone going out being a cross-dresser. And so I know we're all in a bit of a struggle um, to get recognition um, and we're all fighting each other at times. The transgendered are fighting the cross-dressing, they're fighting the drag queens, etc., etc., etc. All I wanted to do was to try and find a way of helping and normalizing the cross-dressing concept or argument um, and that's the reason why we put the channel together to relay information help people in terms of makeovers and you know where to go and we're hoping to expand that reach out a little bit more globally by doing sort of live presentations and whatever they call it i don't know live streaming and all that sort of thing but what i wanted to do before i drift off anymore in a, in a completely wrong direction here is to just talk about the aspects of cross-dressing 
and assure people that are maybe watching this, I don't know um, if somebody is worried about it and they keep going through what we call the purge or the guilt aspect of it, that's very, very normal. I hear it regularly of people that just sort of say, right, I'm gonna throw all of my stuff into a bag and throw it into the dump or give it away or sell it or whatever it is. And yet this inner drive within us, it slowly eats back at us again, it resurfaces. So it's not something, in my humble opinion, that you can just sort of lock away permanently. Yes, you can lock this emotion, feeling, whatever you would like to call it, away, you can suppress it. And as any doctors or anybody in therapy will tell you, that once you suppress things, you do have to pay a bit of a price, whether it be emotionally or with some people, it may even be physically. And I've known quite a lot of people over this unfortunate period that we're going through with all this virus they've been locked away and not have access to the inner part of their personality they've literally gone mad literally gone crazy and you know done some very obscure and daft things and divorces are uh, paramount or on the horizon for several people that I've spoken to because of this drive inside them and for me, it's a bit of a yin and yang. It's a balance. I'm lucky enough, as I said before, to be able to balance my lifestyle between being Sophie and being Andrew. Um, so I'm one of the lucky ones, but I know there are a lot of people out there that aren't quite so lucky. I wish I had the answers to say that if you did this, this and this, um, maybe your life would be a lot different and a lot better. We're all on our own personal journeys. Um, my objective is not to lecture, it's just to try and hopefully share some thoughts and act as a conduit for you out there that may have a lot better experience, a lot better information, news, um, which if you do, please, I implore you, share it in the comments below um, and, and like and share this video with people as well. Let's get the word out there and let's stand up and be counted because you know each day that we get a good positive, and I must emphasize the word positive, sort of opinion or view of cross-dressing out into the general public, we open people's eyes up. I'm a normal, I consider myself a normal anyway, human being that when people get to know me, hopefully they can see through the facade of the makeup and everything else and say, well, you know, I'm not a bad human being. I've got a, an opinion on things. I'm quite easy to be around. And that's the same as everybody's on the other side of this lens or, or, or this, you know, having a look at this video here. You know, we are straightforward, normal people who have got a little bit of a, a different hobby, I would call it. Um, some of us are on a journey, maybe to, even transitioning is, is, a, is a part of the journey. You know, 100% male here and 100% female there, if there are certain, if we could use that annotation. Um, I sort of bounce back and things like this. I know where I am on the spectrum, but it's not important to me that I have to find labels to identify with people. I get very, very frustrated with nouns, pronouns, his, hers, him, them. You know, labels drive me insane. Anybody ask me what I am? I start off with a human being and a good honest one at that. And I don't care for any other labels. You can call me whatever you wish. Crossdresser, TV, queer, odd bore, madman. I don't really care. That's your opinion and you are very, very entitled to it. All I would say is that's just treat me with respect and I will treat you with respect. And that's all I'm ever asking. I would like, and I do, to be able to walk out my door, dressed however I want to be dressed, do whatever I want to do as long as I'm paying due respect to you as a human being and the law and I'm breaking neither. Please leave me alone to get on with my life and I'm very happy to say I can do that here in Brighton, but there are a lot of people out there that live in smaller communities, not just within the UK, within, you know, globally, that they can't walk out the door with confidence without fear of being beaten, uh, abused and disrespected. And I've always found that, that all of that, no matter what the issue is, whether it's this Black Lives Matter or whatever it is, it's generally to do with pure ignorance, and that's all I could put it down to. If somebody has given me a hard time, my internal mechanism turns around and says, well, as long as this doesn't turn violent, this is a good opportunity for me to try and at least drop some of that sort of misunderstanding or possibly some of that ignorance about who I am or what, what 
I perceive to represent. So a day at a time, you know, by the inch is a cinch, and by a yard it's hard. Um, I can look only sort of look after what I can look after. I can, I have done, I've appeared on television uh, many times, literally sort of like thumping a table saying, you know, you must accept me. And to be honest, that was really before I accepted myself. I wanted acceptance and it's very, very difficult to get people to accept you if at first you don't accept yourself. That was the primary lessons I learned from there. But I've always been a person to stand up for what I believe in. I believe in this community. I believe in you. I believe in me. I believe in that I have a right to dress how I want to. I have a right to behave how I wish as long as I'm not breaking any laws of anything else or I'm disrespecting or being harmful to others. And it's a very much a cliche to say, you know, you, we need to stand up and be counted. I've always said that every time I walk out the door or every time I do a video or everything, I'm actually representing, for want of a better expression, the whole community. Um, and that's not a boast. That really means that I am responsible for projecting a good, positive image for everybody. And that's the one thing that you can do and I can do to help each other and all of us to get more of a positive image out there and a bit better understanding. And that's what I mean by standing up and be counted. So every time you walk out the door, if you say, well, I could be the only impression that anybody's ever going to get of a crossdresser or a TV or a tranny or whatever it is. And so that's quite a, a bit of responsibility if you think about it along those lines. But it's a good one because I... I'm a firm believer that everybody that's watching this is a good person um, and unless you can prove me otherwise, hopefully not, but you know we, we, we are all you know good human beings with a little bit of a different hobby than anybody else. I don't know the sciences behind why I cross dress and I don't personally care because even if you gave me all of the answers um, would it make a difference? Would it change my behavioural pattern? Would it change me? Not one iota. I dress because I want to. I dress because it gives me satisfaction. It makes me feel a better, more complete person. Now, if that answer isn't good enough for others, I'm sorry. It's my truth. And it's how I feel. And I'm sure quite a few of you feel the same way. Um, so that's really what I wanted to get off my little chest with my cup of tea here. Um, I hope that uh, in some ways um, I haven't burbled on and it's been a load of rubbish and totally irrelevant to some of you. I'm, I'm hoping in some ways that you know if we're working together or going in a similar direction we can all help each other out and that's you know one of the main reasons for trying to get this channel together to try and project a more positive image for the subject matter. Um, I know that not everybody's watching this can like and subscribe because a lot of us live a stealth life and I do appreciate that. I'm not asking you to put yourself at danger or anything else like that in the cause and the cause for others. If you can subscribe, like and share the video, if you feel so inclined, that would be absolutely fantastic. And we're going to be continuing with this channel irrespective of whatever happens out there in the community and everything else because I enjoy doing this. I hope you, I, I hope you enjoy sort of tuning in from time to time. Um, but, you know, one thing I would ask you to do and, and that is to, if you can, and you feel of certain subjects or things that you would like us to do a video on, it's not just me behind this, you know, there are people behind the camera, some people doing editing, some people supporting the channel in different other ways. Um, I want to bring a diverse sort of channel to you. I want to give you things that benefit to you. If there's anything in terms of a makeover, I'm not the greatest makeup artist in the world, never will be. Um, I've learned my trade through years and years of making horrible mistakes, but even the daftest of people can learn, me, to do things just by pure practice. So if it's makeup or if it's a product review or you would like to see us doing more reviews on clubs and bars, I'd like to be doing interviewing people all around the you know all around the globe. We can do these sort of things with technology today, especially if you're involved in the trans community and you've got a club, a bar, something positive, you want to help the community out in some way, give um, advice or whatever it is, please 
drop me a, a note down below in the comments. So, I've been rambling on for long enough. Um, thank you very much for lending me your ear. I hope I haven't bent it too much. As always, please stay gorgeous and stay tuned until the next time. So, I've been Sophie Summers. This has been Sophie's Brew. And thank you very much for watching. <laughs>